Hey guys, this is Chris with Cowdog Craftworks, and today I'm going to show you how to make this step stool out of ash and tiger wood with some very basic and elegant joinery. So stick around and watch me build. So as you can see, I'm not what the internet would call a large man. So I'm constantly using chairs, paint buckets, and other items to get me where I need to be. And having a step stool just struck me as a nice luxury to have around the shop and the house. I started by breaking down my lumber with the track saw. I had this rather large piece of tiger wood and some off cuts of six quarter ash from another build. Everything was serviced on one side already, so I cut the tiger wood down to match the width of the ash boards, and then used the track saw to joint that ash on one side. Next, I took everything over to the table saw to trim up the opposing side and made sure all my boards were the exact same width. To get the other face surfaced, I went ahead and skip planed these with my lunchbox planer and double checked that each species of wood had consistent thickness. The idea being that the ash would be the vertical supports and the tiger wood would be the horizontal steps of the stool. I then marked everything off and cross cut them to width. The vertical supports will be a glue up of two different lengths of ash, so I'm just ensuring that both sides are identical and flushing everything up with my miter gauge. Now for joinery, I'm going to do a chubby finger joint of sorts, so I'm just using a marking gauge to mark out the opposing board's thickness and then a speed square to line up cuts before taking this over to the bandsaw. I don't have a dedicated bandsaw fence, so I'm using my speed square clamped to its bed to keep everything straight. I cut the tiger wood steps to width and then use the marking gauge again, measuring off that thick ash to line up the finger joint on the tiger wood. However, I didn't take into account blade kerf on the bandsaw here with the square, creating an error, but we'll fix that later. I cut the straight cuts with the fence hack on the bandsaw, but then drilled some relief holes in the waist to help make the corner turn a little bit easier since tiger wood is extremely dense. I then cut all the waist pieces out and ended up with that 1 16th of an inch gap I mentioned earlier. Since nobody likes loose stool, we're going to add some fiber here to tighten it up and cut a shim from some scrap Australian pine. Next, I glued the ash boards together on the edge grain to create a lower and upper step. After that was dry, I used a hole saw to create a semicircle detail that would make four distinct feet and cleaned it up on the spindle sander. Then I clamped everything together for a dry fit and pre-drilled some counter bores to accept a two and a half inch screw before applying glue, reclamping, and drilling everything into place. I wiped away squeeze out with a damp towel and then tapped in the Australian pine shim with some wood glue to fill that unsightly gap. I cut some plugs with a plug cutter to hide the screws, alternating the wood species to create some contrast in the surface. I tapped those in with a mallet and later trimmed them flush. The next day, I went ahead and broke out the large orbital sander polisher and sanded the hell out of this thing, making sure to flush up all the surfaces and ends. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment below. If you don't, do the same so that you never miss a build. Also, if you'd like more daily content, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter for up to the minute shenanigans. If you're looking for tools I use, check out my Amazon storefront, also linked below. After sanding to 320, I used my router with a chamfer bit to chamfer the forward and rear edges for a lighter look. And then card scraped all the exterior surfaces for a finish ready surface. I then took a couple minutes to brand the side with my logo, giving it a light sand afterward with 320 grit. To wrap this up, I went with a homemade finish consisting of equal parts boiled linseed oil and wipe-on poly. I applied a couple coats of that, wiping off all the excess, and after a day of dry time, 
added a second finish of equal parts boiled linseed oil, pure tongue oil, and beeswax. As per usual, make sure to not get your finish and your whiskey mixed up in the process. For the beeswax coat, I heated the finished mixture in the microwave for about 40 seconds and stirred in the beeswax pellets before applying and wiping off the excess. After about another two days of dry time, the stool was finished. I really liked the way the contrast between the two wood species came out as well as the basic but visually appealing joinery. It really elevates a very simple project into something functionally strong but attractive as well. Your friends might even think you're a real woodworker, especially when you're cooking up your own finish. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks.